In this step, let's focus on the refactoring features which are present in Eclipse. The normal way to get to the refactoring features is just by pressing right click refactor and you'd see that there are a lot of options which are present in here. There are a lot of options which are present in the refactor and we would be exploring some of them during this particular step. So let's say I want to extract this to a different method. How do I do that? I would do that by making uh, using a command alt shift m. In Mac it's command alt m or command option m. So let's use windows nomenclature from now on. It would be alt shift m. So alt shift m what you'd see is in this particular piece of code, we are actually sending in two inputs, I mean two parameters, numbers and also sum. And the calculated sum, as you can see, it's written as an input. If I go ahead and do that, it would be calculate sum and I do enter. Okay, there we go. We have a calculated sum. The bad thing about this particular method is the fact that initialization is happening here and thereby I have to send sum as an parameter. I don't like this. I want to inline this back. So whatever extract I have done, I want to inline it back. It's all shift I, which is inline and it would inline every invocation of this method. You'd see that the code for this particular method would be replaced back. That's it. So all shift M is to extract a method. All shift M is to, sorry, all shift M is to extract a method and all shift I is to inline the method. And also actually right now it's creating two variables. I don't really want the sum variable at all. So what I can say is I can say inline. So it's assigned more than one, so it cannot be inline. That's very good. So what I'll do is I'll do a control D, remove that particular piece of line. Now I can very quickly edit it back to some. So that's good. But what we want to really do is extract the entire thing out. So if I now extract the whole thing out, you'd see that the only thing which is passed in is numbers. So now I can say calculate some. This is a good method because all that is accepting is uh, numbers as input and it returns the sum back as output. And I'm really happy with this method. So I would leave it as it is. Let's say I don't want to really want to call it sum, but I would want to call it something else. The way you can rename a variable is by pressing Alt Shift R. Now I can rename it to anything. Instead of calling it sum, some people like to call it result because that's the result of the method. And then I can press enter. And you'd see that all the places where that particular thing is used, the name has changed. Actually, this is not just for variables. Let's say I want to change the name of this particular method, calculate sum. So I would want to change the name of this particular method. I don't want to call this calculate sum, but I would want to call this calculate sum for n numbers. Or, I mean, I'm just typing something in. So Alt Shift R. I want to change the name of this interface, dummy interface. I want to change the name of this particular class. I mean, you'd see that even the name of this Java file would be changed. So first Java class, I'm typing in first Java class, refactored. I'll say continue. And you'd see that even the name of the Java file is renamed. So that's Alt Shift R. So until now we have looked at Alt Shift R, which is to rename. Alt Shift M, which is to extract a method. Alt Shift I, which is to extract, which is to inline a particular method. Consider this small piece of code which is present in here. So you have int radius is equal to five. And I have ADI is 3.14 into radius into radius. I mean, it's quite a simple thing. What I want to do is instead of directly putting in here, I want to extract a variable out of it. The way you can do that is pressing Alt Shift L. When you say Alt Shift L, you can extract a local variable. I can give it a name. This is area. So I can say area, double area is equal to 3.14 into radius into radius. And if I don't really want to do that, I can again do an Alt Shift I. This is the same as inlining a method, inlining a variable is the same. So Alt Shift I, and I would inline it back. And now I can extract it back again by using Alt Shift L area. Now, one thing I don't really like in here is 3.14 is a constant. So it's the value of pi. So how do I tell the program that it's a value of pi? I can create a constant, Alt Shift C. Actually, there is nothing called Alt Shift C. Well, I have to do Alt Shift T. That's the shortcut to bring up the refactor method. So Alt Shift T. So if you don't remember method signature is C, extract method is M, extract local variable is L. All that you need to remember for a start is all shift T and this menu comes up. And now I can pick, pick up extract constant. So extract constant pi. So it creates a variable pi. I mean, not a variable, it creates a constant pi, which is assigned a value. That's how you can actually extract a constant out. All shift C is used to change the parameters of a method. So let's say I want to 
I don't want to really call this numbers or I want to add a parameter to this method. So let's say I want to add new parameter uh, int and I would want to call it dummy and I will give it a default value 0 and you'd see that everywhere this particular method is used a 0 would be automatically passed as the default value. So now you can see that int dummy a new parameter comes in and also wherever this particular method is called here it's adding in. So this is basically alt shift c. Alt shift c is to change the signature of a method. Now I can go ahead and delete this one as well. So now I can say remove this particular thing and say okay and then you'd see that that particular parameter is gone. If that parameter was gone, I mean used here, it would result in a few compilation errors but what we wanted to do is remove the parameter completely. Another important thing that you can do is move methods as well. Alt shift v would be the shortcut for that. So alt shift v, it would ask where do you want to move this particular method? So you can select a type to which you can move this particular method. Here I don't have a lot of things but when you are actually working on refactoring something and you would want to move a method from one class to another class, that's it. So that's all you need to be able to do a refactor or shift M. That's a quick introduction to how you can refactor in Eclipse. There are a lot of other options in Eclipse that would help you to move things around classes as well. In the next step, let's move on to the code generation features which are developed, which are present in Eclipse. Eclipse is really wonderful in terms of code generation. So I'll just create a cla dummy class. I mean, I'm creating an inner class, but this could have been a class on its own. So let's say I'm creating a class bean and I'm creating a private variable one and variable two. I've just created a couple of simple uh, private variables. Now, I would want to generate the getters and setters for that. So all that you need to do is Alt Shift S and say generate getters and setters. Alt Shift S, generate getters and setters and I can do even select all and press OK. You'd see that the getters and setters are automatically generated. You can do this for any kind of variable. So all that you need to do is select these things you would want to generate the thing for Alt Shift S and say generate getters and setters. Okay, these two, we already have the getters and setters so we got the error but if the getters and setters are not there, you'd get it. So it's select the thing and press Alt Shift S and you can choose from the drop down what you want to generate. So now I would want to generate, let's say the two string for this particular class. So I can say two string and generate the two string for that particular class as well. So you can see that the two string is created. Actually one of the options which would have been present in that particular window would have been where this two string has to be generated and how this has to be generated. There are multiple options which are available and the one which I chose first time was to use a simple string concatenation. Let's now do it again, Alt Shift S, generate two string and let's now choose a code style different from it. So let's say we'll ask it to use string builder and say okay. So now it uses string builder to build the two string. So it also gives us the option where we can choose what are the things that we would want to be part of the two strings. So you can choose the different things and you can even actually have methods and inherited methods as part of that particular two string thing. So that's how you can generate a two string. And now if I want to generate the equals and hash code, that's there too. So you can go ahead and select what are the things you would want to be present as part of the equals and hash code. I mean, as you would already know, whenever you override an equals, you have to also override the hash code method if you want to really write good programs. So when you select these two, Eclipse would automatically generate the equals and hash code method. So generally the equals and hash code methods would be little huge because they have to take care of all the situations where both objects can be null. So all that kind of stuff would be handled automatically and the equals and hash code methods would be generated to you. The next thing that we would be looking at is actually generating a constructor using fields. So all shift s again, all shift s generate constructor using fields. Now you can generate a constructor. So you have a constructor generated here which is very, very clear, right? I mean, that's, I mean, all this kind of code, I can write it manually, but why do I want to write it manually when Eclipse can generate this for me? So Alt Shift S and you can also say which methods you would want to override from the super class. So let's say I want to override finalize and clone. So you can go ahead and choose them and implement those particular, get the default implementation. So now I can go ahead and stub whatever I would want to do in here. So I'll remove them. This class is really giving huge. That's Alt Shift S and choose override implement method. So you can choose which methods from the super class you'd want to override and get a default template with, where you can fill in exactly what you want to do. So these are some of the really important things that are present in Eclipse. These are the different code generation features that are present in Eclipse. In the next step, let's see how we can use, I mean, we can organize the imports, how we can format source code, how we can use save actions.